be here again, uh, bringing you another wonderful math video. This one is on indeterminate form for my calculus students. Alright, so, uh, so indeterminate form is something that happens pretty frequently in, uh, you know, your first year calculus. Uh, and basically, all it is is when you end up with 0 over 0 after substituting. So, if, what I mean by that, if I take this negative 4 here, and I go ahead and sub it into, let me just get a pen out sub it into this guy so I'd have on the top I would have you know negative 4 squared uh, minus 4 minus 12 which of course I do it to the bottom as well so negative 4 squared minus 16 so on top negative 4 squared 16 minus 4 minus 12 0 and then the same thing for the bottom uh, negative 4 squared minus 16 so that's going to be 0 as well so I end up with a 0 over a 0 so in that, the reason why we call it indeterminate form is we simply cannot tell the limit just by from subbing it in. So we have to do something before we do that. Now sometimes it's obvious, sometimes it's not. Um, in this video, I'm going to take you through one method of that, uh, which often occurs, which is we have the factor. So there are other things we might have to do. So the first method I'm going to teach you guys is factoring. The second one is going to be conjugate. And these are, you know, the two most frequently that I've seen show up. Other ones that that show up sometimes are uh, common denominator, called CD. So we have to find a common denominator. Uh, I'll make a video on that as well. And number four, I'll throw in some random examples. And what I usually tell my students is, by any means necessary. So, um, you know, the questions that you know your calculus teachers can be pretty clever when they come up. Uh, when they come up with questions. So not all of them are going to be in the first three, but they usually are. Um, and I think number two is probably the most common on exams. But anyway. All right, so let's do this question. So the limit as x approaches negative 4. So let's assume we've already done this. We found out, wow, this is in determinate form. You know, we have to do something. So the obvious thing to do with this guy is factor the top and factor the bottom. So you know what adds to give me 1 and multiplies to give me negative 12 so that would be 4 and negative 3 so this guy factors to x plus 4 and x minus 3 and the bottom is a difference of squares so square root of 16 is 4 so x plus 4 x minus 3 or sorry x x minus 4 X minus four. So what you want to happen, and if you know you do a couple steps and this doesn't happen for you with an indeterminate form, if something doesn't factor or doesn't cancel, then you you're doing something wrong. So in our case here, the x plus four and the x plus four cancel. So I'm left with um, the limit as x approaches negative four. It is of x minus 3 over x minus 4. Getting a little sloppy here. Oh, here we go. So, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to evaluate this limit. So I'm just going to sub in negative 4 for x. So I end up with negative 4, subtract 3, all over negative 4, subtract negative 4. So I end up with negative 7 over negative 8 or simply 7 over 8 so the limit of that guy does indeed exist it's negative it's 7 over 8 so at first you couldn't tell we did a little rigging and then we ended up with 7 over 8 so factoring is you know it's it's so fundamental to everything we do in calculus it's just one of those things that comes in handy so often so it's a fundamental skill that you need really need to know all right, so let's try another one. So this one's going to involve a cubic. Um, so if you haven't if you haven't done a whole lot of factoring of cubics, really, there's not that many ways that I know how to do. Anyway, uh, grouping is one that shows up. If it, if it's not grouping, uh, you might have something like uh, I call the quadratic in the skies, where we can sort of sub something out. Um, if you're really really stuck, you could do the rational roots theorem or integral root theorem. Um, we're not going to do that. We're just going to group this guy. So I'll take a little aside and factor this guy for you on the side in case you need a little review on that. So so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to group 
the first two terms and the last two terms together. So I end up with you know x cubed plus 2x squared plus negative x minus 2. So then I'm looking at what can I factor, what common factors can I factor, or you set a bracket. So I can take an x squared out of the first guy, x squared, x plus 2. And then I can take a negative 1 outside of this guy, so I end up with plus negative 1. Now, you don't necessarily have the right negative 1. I like to do it. Um, and then x plus 2. And then since they these guys both have x plus 2s in them, we'll just factor that out, x plus 2. And then x squared minus 1 is what's left. Really, my students just think of it as, you know, I take what's, these have to be, this, this has to be the same, so I have to have the same both sets of brackets, so I have that one, and then whatever's left over goes in the second guy. And then this guy can factor because that's a um, difference of squares, so it ends up being x plus 2, x minus 1, x plus 1. So now all I need to do is in my calculation over here, so the limit as x approaches negative 2, now I would have already done this if I was on a test. I would check it to make sure it is indeterminate form. You got to show that your teacher is probably going to get, you know, take you a mark away or something like that, something silly. Um, but yeah, it is already, so don't need to worry about it. So now what we do is just replace this cubic here with this factored form of it. So we got x plus two, x minus one, x plus one, and then this guy here again just difference of squares x minus 2 x plus 2 so we end up canceling here and canceling here and then we're going to just going to sub in what we have left so I have an uh, x minus 1 and an x plus 1 so that's going to be negative 2 minus 1 negative 2 plus 1 all over negative 2 minus 2 so that ends up being, let's see, negative 3 times negative 1 all over negative 4. So we end up with negative 3 over 4. And uh, there's our limit. So, um, yeah, really, guys, is if you know your factoring skills good, then these won't cause you too much trouble. Um, but if you want to be exposed to some more examples, you should check out my other videos on indeterminate form, on conjugate, and common denominators. And hopefully I'll see you guys in class. Good luck.